got a site where you're building a building it's mm. quite central that you've got somewhere to go to the loo mm. um, and obviously you can wee in the bushes but sometimes nature calls and you need something like this especially if you've got lots of volunteers things like that so you, you need a loo and also it's a great way of tra tra doing a training wall with your tyre ramming so the tank below where the poo is um, and, and the wee and stuff is actually that's a tyre wall around there mm. and what we've got there's actually two toilets here so you use one until it's filled up and then move into the other one um, it generally is recommended that you leave it for at least two years before you use the compost but it just it really depends on how well you've managed it whether there's we in it whether meat eaters are using it and whether it's um, anaerobic and yeah and because if it goes anaerobic then it's just going to turn into sludge and stinks so you you have to look after it you have to make sure you're adding sawdust and things sawdust yeah. well yes yeah, so, because you can use any sort of carbon rich material but the great thing about sawdust is it's got a high surface area for the amount of carbon oh. that's in it and it's quite airy as well so um, and it's also a good idea to add a handful of compost every now and again because it's got the right organisms in it oh. to get it going um, another thing people do is they sprinkle like fire ash on it now that doesn't really have any carbon left in it because you've used all of that for your fuel for heating but what it does do is kind of seal in the smell a little bit and it's something to do with your ash and eventually it gets back on the land so it's generally recommended but there's different schools of thought but it's generally recommended that you just use uh, this compost to go around the base of trees and on ornamental plants rather than putting it directly on things you know around lettuces and things you're going to eat yourself but it depends if you know like say that human your handbook it it talks you through like every possible pathogen that you could get from your own from poo and how to kill them and how to deal with them all so if you're really on it and you're dealing with your compost properly then you can put it on anything but you just need to sort of do a bit of research and and know what the potential risks are. When you said meat eaters, you mean meat eaters to avoid it or to be encouraged to use it? No, no. well, <laughs> one school of thought is like a vegan you can use the who I think after one year um, and then a vegetarian, I can't remember whether it's two or four and then a meat eater it's seven years. <laughs> uh, but yeah. it it's not like we're all carrying around these terrible diseases if, if you're a meat eater. <laughs> But there's things like, there's this one particular roundworm egg that can survive for more than two years outside of your body. Most things, you know, are designed to be in your body that, that harm you. So once they're sitting around long enough outside your body, they, they don't survive. There's only one or two things that you're probably not carrying. But, um, it's, you know, and, and another, like people say, oh, if somebody's on the pill, let's put loads of hormones in or if they're on certain medication oh, yeah. um, mm. I don't know I don't know how much that gets broken down and whether that gets taken up by your plants but that's just something that some people talk about what do you do with it while waiting an X number of years so it just sits it's just there sit doing well, I mean, its thing is there enough like, what you're this? I mean, if, for instance, you said seven years earlier can they well, I think I've been Should working be two here like four. Or f What's that? Shouldn't be two containers around the back, you know? Yeah, they're two separate yeah. tanks. I mean, you're welcome to go around and have a look, but they're quite big, sort of areas, mm -hmm. like say that big, oh, and it just keeps rotting down, keeps rotting down. Yeah. So in yeah, the yeah, yeah. like four or so years that I've worked here, this is the first time we've switched over to the other oh, loop. Oh right, okay, I thought. So yeah, yeah it, and I've that's. Got no idea. How much how often do you put sawdust and all that? Every time. Well, you every use it. time, yeah. yeah. Oh, every time you use it, you oh. should put some in. Uh, and if it's starting to smell, put a load more in. Oh. And like, or you could put a load of straw in, whatever you've got to hand. Oh, okay. Just shove it. And loo roll and cardboard things like that. Some people put all their compost in together, so they take the household compost, put that in as well. Oh. So then you've got a more varied compost. Um, but it depends. You put water. 
No, you should keep it dry because if dry. there's water, then it gets all um, like mushy and gets anaerobic. Then. So keep it as dry as possible and, and as warm as possible. Oh. And there's some systems that like work out ways of getting it hotter in there, so it speeds up the process of the organisms and also helps to kill off any germs. But the thing that I think that's important about compost loose. So generally, if you think of the mess that we've got ourselves in, it's because human beings are the only thing in nature that creates waste. Everything else is in a cycle, isn't it? Um, and it's got um, sort of everything going round in a, a circle, but human beings have a linear system. So we have where, say, with our compost and the nutrients, we're uh, degrading soil by farming and taking away from the soil mm. and not looking after it properly so we're taking nutrients out of the soil to the extent where we have to use loads of fossil fuels to um, to put the nutrients back in mm. and then we're you know eating stuff and then going to the loo and flushing it away and causing pollution with our waste somewhere else so we're causing a problem there and a problem there but with compost loose, you actually have a cycle. So if you're growing food on your land, it's actually an opportunity to, to put back into that land and keep a closed loop and keep a cycle. So instead of it being a poison and a pollution, it's a resource. Because the majority of developments that, that human beings make actually just destroy a little bit of nature. You know, you, you lay your foundations and then nothing can grow there and you chop down trees so you get the light in and you just make things a little bit harder for the local ecosystem but you can actually, if you design things properly you can give back to the local ecosystem and you can increase the biodiversity and you can improve the soil and you can actually, by having a shit, do something good for <laughs> your local environment so I think, and it's really quite easy as well you know, it only takes tw like 20 minutes to get a bucket and build a loose seat on it and then you know you could in a day like build a compost heap where you're taking your <coughs> compost from inside to out if you've got a garden. You don't actually have to transport it either you can just move your compost toilet around the ground. So there's a guy in oh. Zimbabwe who once it's filled they just move the compost toilet, good topsoil, plant a tree and over <coughs> the years he's got a field full of trees now which <laughs> used to be the position of the compost toilet. Oh, that's great, yeah, and that's then you great. think, and then you get a new view out of your.